Today, we're going to talk about things that you should never, ever have in your house when you're thinking about selling. These are some of the things we've helped our clients with for over two decades. We've got an amazing list, and some of them you'll get nowhere else but right here on this channel. Let's jump into it. Hey guys, thanks for joining us for our latest video on what to do when you're selling. And this comes up all the time with clients we're working with of what do I need to do to get my house ready? And so we've created this list of things that should never, ever, ever be in your house or at your house when you're selling. One of the ones that we lead off with, with all of our clients, because it's one of the most painful and most often overlooked items when you're preparing your house to sell is your personal inventory and irreplaceable items. You know, like I'm talking about great grandmother's pearl earrings that you've inherited, Mickey Mantle's rookie baseball card, those things that are personally special to us that can never, ever, ever be replaced because of what they are. Just go ahead, take advantage, take responsibility and get those things out of the house and into another place because that way it completely avoids any opportunity for anyone to mess them up or for them to go to a new owner. Next, so we just got through talking about personal property and this one might be really surprising and yet it is something we have to talk about often. The next thing that should never ever be on site at your house when you're selling is you. You shouldn't be there. You need to let us and the buyers present your house to market because when you're there, even though you know it better than anyone else, you love it the most. The reality is you also have the biggest impact about keeping it not being the next new owners. And that means that you you have your own personal preference and your own personal experience in it, and that's amazing. But now that we're selling, we've got to go to market. We're going to be retail and public space, and we've got to leave room for it to be the next buyer's new home. And so we want to make sure that they can feel comfortable with that. They want to be able to meet someone who it isn't their house, whether it's us or one of our open house hosts, or if one of their agents is guiding them through it on a private tour, they want to have some opportunity to go through the house and visualize what it might look like for it to be their next new home. So um, believe it or not, we have people that want to say, well, I want to tell them I know more. And for sure, there's going to be a time for that. But we've got to go through the process. We've got to be on the market. We've got to search out that right buyer, get to a contract and remove some contingencies. And then we can get you involved and you could share some of those personal special things about the amazing bulbs that bloom in the spring and uh, you know all the things that make it really a personal and special home uh, for that homeowner. So uh, just one that doesn't get talked about, but is super important to the process. Next is one that I actually fell victim to personally when I was selling one of my houses. And the thing that shouldn't be on site when you're selling is cash. Now you may say, oh, I've got that special cash spot in my house. We had one uh, in a house that I was selling. And we thought, no way will anyone ever find where this is or where our little, you know, special cash spot is when we need to just pick up a little bit of cash to head out the door because we we didn't go to the bank. And I'm going to tell you, we lost over $1,500. And I promise you, it was super well hidden. It was not very clear. And when our house was for sale, we left it up and on and in the spot. And then all of a sudden, when we went to move, the cash was gone. And that went across a bunch of different people. There are people that target houses that are for sale just to come through and look for little valuables, cash and things like this that they can pick up and they may do it with the agent not even knowing. It may not even be you know, coordinated with the agent. They may call a total stranger and say, I want to see this house. And there may be three or four of them and that agent can't keep up with all of those folks. They're working to build a relationship with them in your house while they're meanwhile casing and going through for that. So if you've got cash, if you've got that special stack, either make sure it's in uh, a safe and locked up or out of the house altogether while you're for sale. Not a week goes by in the market that we don't come across this next tip that we're sharing. And the thing that you don't want to have out there when your house is for sale is all of your passwords. Now, we come across houses when we're out in the market all the time where people have their computer and wherever it may be, whether it's in the family office or in the actual office or in the basement, and they've got sticky notes all around the side with their passwords for all the different places, or they've got a list just under their computer where all their passwords are, or even having it open 
uh, on your desktop is still not safe enough. So we want to make sure all of your passwords are all locked up, not surrounding the perimeter of your monitor. And that if you do have a password monitor that your all your computer screens are locked at home. Now, this is just a little bonus. When we're actually setting up and helping people sell their houses, we actually recommend that they set up a guest Wi-Fi for that. So people aren't tracking or getting into your Wi-Fi. There's a guest Wi-Fi that's there. We put little signs up for people to say, hey, we have guest Wi-Fi in case you want to show this with someone. More than 50% of the showings have someone not there and they may have someone with them. They may still be at work or they may be traveling or what have you or sick. Um, and they have someone that they want to involve. And it's becoming very common to have some form of virtual showing in the market and having a really strong Wi-Fi connection only makes your house stand out that much more over the competition that didn't or jumped and started and stopped and they couldn't really see it. Um, having that as an asset against our competition is a huge advantage that we share with our clients. Next is a new trend that you may not have seen if you haven't been in the market in the past few years years. And this is our cameras and surveillance that is everywhere. We carry studios in our pockets now with our phones, with great mics and great cameras, but our homes now have multiple different systems with cameras, mics, and we could get in real trouble without disclosing that those are there. Those include the doorbells. Those include the thermostat systems. Those include some of the smart appliances that we have that have all these things. So if you have a smart home that has multiple devices that you're going to leave on when you're selling, you absolutely need to make sure that the clients that are visiting your house are aware that they are being surveilled and that they're being watched and that you have active cameras throughout the house. It's the right thing to do. It's the courteous thing to do. Everyone wants to know. And are more people more common, you know, commonly okay with that? They are. And yet it's also the next right thing to do to let people know that, that, that you're doing that. Otherwise it's uh, it could, it could cause all kinds of problems. It could really get into um, a lot of questionable uh, conversations. So if you have a bunch of cameras, it's very easy to do it in a couple of places and even in the listing to let them know. Now, We've even had a client recently with cameras where we went through and they did not want to be on camera. And so we had to work with, and we did for privacy reasons for that particular client uh, who was a public figure. We needed to go through and make an arrangement for a truly private showing without that. And so together with our partner in the business who was over there and this, had this listing, it was no problem. Uh, we arranged it for secure privacy. And that was super important to this buyer because they really wanted to know that they could have a traditional experience without knowing that they were being you know, watched while they were looking at this house. Now, this one's one of my personal favorites, but it doesn't get talked about very often. And something that should not be there under any circumstance when your house is for sale is your pets. Now, you may have very common and traditional pets that are amazingly well-behaved, that have won awards for behavior. But I promise you, after the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of showings with animals without their owners being there, they just behave differently. And as a homeowner, as a pet owner and uh, in my household, I just don't want someone that I don't know, you know, interacting with my animals. So uh, you want to make sure that you take them with or remove them. And candidly, there shouldn't really be any evidence that a pet lives there when your house is for sale, but you for sure don't want to leave them out in the open. There was a time where I was working with uh, two good friends and clients at the time. Both of them were professional uh, veterinarians and we walked up to the door. We knocked on the door as we do to let people know we're coming, you know, coming to the house. We had an appointment and two large dogs met us at the door on the other side of the glass door. And both of them looked at me and they were like, oh, the, the, those dogs are going to bite us. And I was like, okay. And then they stepped back. <laughs> and I apparently as a realtor, uh, was the one that had to go and figure out how to deal with the dog so we could look at the house. And, uh, they know that story. I've told that story to them many times and have told it to others many times, uh, since, but we ultimately, I went in being a good 
uh, pet owner and lots of experience with dogs, talked to the dogs calmly and softly and actually got them, you know, to a bedroom uh, where they were comfortable and where their crates were and got them in there and shut that room. But I'm certain the homeowner had no idea because the dogs had never behaved in that way. And that's just natural. So um, and when it comes to pets, you want to make sure that it just shows uh, as though no one is there and nothing is there because you can just run into all kinds of scenarios where they get out or they come across someone who doesn't like a certain pet. So it's just the best practice. Don't have them be there and let, and show little to no sign of them even being in the house. Put up the water bowls and dog bowls and toys and treats and, you know, things of that nature. Hey, so if we're meeting for the first time, thanks for being here and checking out our channel. My name's Alex and I'm your friend in real estate in Nashville. And we are really enjoying our journey with YouTube and getting to share some things that we've been doing for over two decades, 1,100 successful families that we've helped make a new house their home. And we've been doing all of that here in Middle Tennessee and Nashville. So we're starting to share our story across the world here on YouTube at the urging of many folks. So if you found us today, help us out and take that subscribe button from red to gray. Go ahead and smash it for us and help us continue to bring great things and great content like this. We've got more things to share. So stick around to the end because there's some really good ones. So let's keep on with our tips. Now, this one's going to scare some people. However, many times when we've been selling houses, we've had people come into our houses specifically and target in a targeted way for drugs. Now, it may not be for illegal drugs um, in particular, more to the epidemic that we're dealing with in, around addiction and some of our over-the-counter you know, medication. And people can and do target houses that look like families that may have those, that have different events in life where they can see clues into events in life where there may be some remainder uh, medications in their houses. Uh, multiple times in my career, I've been in open houses or at showings with people we didn't know and the first thing they did was came straight into the house and went straight to the bathroom. And yet we could hear them going through the drawers and the medicine cabinets. So we want to make sure you go through all that stuff. Make sure you remove all of those things. Good time to do that when you're getting ready for the market anyway. And we don't want to scare you. We just want to prepare you. That's our job, right? We'd rather tell you from all of our years of experience about what you can expect as opposed to you just experiencing it and us dealing with it together. Now, we're still learning, uh, you know, even 22 years in, we're still having new experiences and new things happen. However, these are really best practices just to make sure, just make it easy and take some of those things out of the house and they'll be on their way. So this one is actually surprises people all the time is that when we go through and when you put your house on the market, you know, your house is going to be retail space. It's going to be open to the public. And as we've shared earlier in this video, you know, people will call other agents that they don't know to meet you, meet them at your house for a showing. And they may have the absolute best and most honest of intentions, or they may not have the most honest or best intentions by doing that. So it's our job to help you get prepared. So just like some of your digital passwords, make sure all of your documents, your financial corner that's in your house is all locked up and secure. You want to make sure that you've got that under lock and key somewhere where it can't easily, a drawer can't be opened or a filing cabinet, make sure it's locked or even better, completely removed from the property. Everyone's got all their wills and trust and bank statements and mortgage statements. Not a week goes by that we're not in a house where we don't see, you know, a mortgage statement sitting on the counter um, with their account number, with their balance, with their address, their name. And all of that is dangerous to someone with real negative and malicious intentions. So we really recommend getting all the financial you know, documents secured, locked up, or even better, off-site all together because again we're going to do our absolute best but we want as many people to come and go as possible but we don't want to be you know a, an amusement park and we certainly don't want to be open to any thievery that may come through the market now next this is one you've probably heard for years and years and years and it's take down all your personal photos and we say something slightly different and we actually say leave room for this to be the new owner's house. If you go in and there's a giant gallery wall, you know, across the, the decades of you raising a family in this house, as we commonly come across here in Nashville, where they've raised their, you know, children and all of this, and this is beautiful gallery wall of, of life that's happened. And it's amazing. It's striking. It's wonderful. And yet that 
very much feels like your home. And so that's something we recommend quite often is that the gallery, you know, needs to needs to come down. Uh, often, at least in our market, you come across and we'll see, you know, the senior paintings and portraits that are out, whether they're actual paintings or, or just photographs. And you want that for your own privacy, but you also want it for the, your new buyer, right? When you're going for sale, it's not going to be your home, you know, anymore. Okay, next is one of our favorites that I like to share with clients. And it's about eliminating doubt when you're selling the house. Now, doubt shows up in a couple different ways. It can come from deferred maintenance. You know, if you don't prep your house and go through one of our videos, you can see that here. We'll link it here as we go to show you how to prep your house for market. And one of the tips we use there, but if you have deferred maintenance, you know, if you've got where the dog has rubbed up against several of the door cells and hasn't, and then the trim, and you know, you haven't prepped that, that creates doubt, you know, in the buyer's mind. Well, if the trim's dirty, then probably the ducts are dirty. And then that's probably made the central heat and air system work harder than it is. And it's 10 years old. So, and that all happens subconsciously in a second. All that happens just you know, fast. It just blows right through, just like in a movie where it's just flashing through in your eyes. Often we come across houses you don't want to show any signs of distress. And over 22 years, we've had clients in markets where that was common. And so, you know, it's only going to drag out the process and cause people to have different opinions about your property. Last thing to share around what you need to absolutely not do when you're selling your house, and it's to make huge demands. You got to think about being, uh, you know, being in the hospitality business. When your house is for sale, it becomes retail space. And so making demands of people of like, you know, only having a 14 minute window to show houses or only allowing people in a two hour window every third Wednesday of you know the month, which is only one time, something like that really out of the ordinary and some of the common processes can really be disruptive to your, your ultimate goal. Now I'm sharing things like that because we deal with clients that have those expectations and we can work through that always. We can work through anything that we have, but the more we can be and match and mirror the market, the better. Our average lead time for a showing right now is about three hours. And that's even on super high-end properties on the upper end of the market. And so we just have to be prepared that we would go to market much like many of these things. It's about being prepared to be ready. Now, listen, there's times that showings pop up that it just doesn't work out, right? They didn't allow enough time. It's too much of a hurry, but we do give them alternate times where we can do that. But we want to make sure that we understand that this is retail space. We have people that get really upset that people don't put on the booties or don't take their shoes off. And actually, some of those things in different markets across the country can and do create liability issues because you're making a demand and an expectation on someone to do something in your house that you don't know. And what if they slip and fall? Then you know you have some responsibility and liability there. So listen, it's a big transition to shift out of your mindset of like, this is my house versus it's going for sale. And we're a partner in that. We're here to help with that. We're here to guide you through all of the things that happen. There's 46 humans involved in every real estate transaction just in one deal. That's not if there's another person selling or buying in the process, then that just doubles the number of people. And that's where we really come together to help our clients have successful events and closings to work through that. And because of our experience, we have a ton of different things that we can help problem solve and work through. It's our pleasure to bring great content like this to you. I hope you've enjoyed it. You've made it with us this far. Thanks so much. Let us know in the comments below which one was new to you. Or if we missed one, let us know in the comments below too. We'd love to hear that. We love interacting with you and hearing from you all across the world. So please do drop us a comment here. And until we connect again, my name is Alex and I'm your friend in real estate in Nashville. Please share this with someone you know that we need to know is moving to Nashville in the next few months or even the next year. And until we connect again, keep on keeping on.